basically lose your shit, drop everything, and just go. It's real. It's real. It's non-stage. It's non-fake. It is based on real people. It's based on real emotions. Uh, it's 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 based about caring about each other and and it's it's real. You know, I'm approachable. I know a lot of the fans personally. I know sometimes what they go through. Um, and I think that is part of of life. Connecting with other people and music helps us to do that. They were full of contrast uh, for me personally. Um, when the pandemic started, I think everybody got hit with like, oh my God, what's going on? Me included. Uh, at the time I was traveling um, South Africa, Australia, and actually already flying back from Australia with a mask. And when I got back in uh, March 2020, um, basically everything went off the map for me touring wise. So that really meant that everything was really, really getting serious. But I needed to stay busy for myself besides trying to make some new music. Uh, I was uh, trying to fuel my label Body Warmer with new music, um, making remixes, but also working towards an artist album. But I didn't want my, you know, to lock myself up only in the studio and uh, to be secluded from my family. I have a, a, a at that time, a one year old um, and, and with my family, I also wanted to embrace that family time. However, uh, I also didn't want to kind of go AWOL and just, you know, be off the map. So I started with daily live streams, uh, started doing those first on Instagram, um, and then quickly moved to Facebook, Twitter, um, Twitch, um, uh, Everywhere you could stream or you can actually stream it, then I would take a possibility to do that. <laughs> um, that got a large following um, and it was a lot of fun to do, especially in the beginning when things are new. You know, that was that's with a lot of things when they kind of originate, when they kind of happen, they are new, they fresh. And that's usually the coolest time you look back at. And so do I. Um, at that time, I was also doing um, live streams for charity, did live streams for the Tao Group, uh, Care Fund, uh, for UNICEF, and I did some of those extra to the daily streams that I did already. So um, everything was just completely like hands on. It was just like, okay, I'm going to do a stream today, uh, I'm going to just play and see what happens. Different styles of music didn't mean didn't didn't care if it was deep techno or progressive or trance or EDM or big room or even more extreme styles didn't matter as long as it was fun also for me to do and fun for the fans to watch and I made 250 episodes like that uh, landing us at the end of 2020 <clears throat> where I got the opportunity to go to China to tour. Uh, some of the people they actually know that I have a, a, a Chinese uh, partner, she's from China and together with our little girl we got the opportunity to go to China and after quarantine starting a tour of half a year in China uh, which brought me to many cities in China that I haven't even seen before you know for all of my uh, touring life so that was super interesting it was super interesting to see how uh, a huge country like China is dealing with uh, a pandemic situation like that. Really, really interesting to see. Uh, I got to learn a lot from that as well. Uh, I got to see a lot of great, fantastic clubs, people having a great time, uh, responding a lot to the new music as well. So in a way, it continued moving forward very slowly, like really like turtle style, but it happened. After a half year got back, everything kind of settled down um, and um, um, yeah, then we are already in the middle of 2021 and uh, went to uh, Egypt 
for a show quick back and forth before heading to Mexico. Uh, did a show there as well and moving to America where I was continuing my marquee residency where I've been playing for over 10 years now. Uh, and I'm very, very proud of that. And I'm very happy about that as well. So moving around in America, seeing how America is dealing with everything and just got back, uh, you know, a couple of weeks from that uh, as we are now and I make a new tour in Canada and America again as well. So uh, very long story short, uh, I consider myself very, very, very lucky uh, to be able to, you know, continuously stay moving with touring here and there, pushing out a little bit of new music, just got a new record out last weekend uh, with Haley Ann uh, on my own body warmer label, which is doing really well. Um, also fueling the label with a lot of new talent uh, because I mean, the world is your oyster, right? So there's so much talent out there that I'm also trying to, you know, try to give a little bit of a platform. And um, let's just hope, um, that the whole pandemic in a way you know gets to its end as soon as possible so we can all pick up our lives again and and start really moving forward but for 100 percent i'm very happy to be part of the revealed uh recordings family now uh that's also where i'm uh, doing my body warmer label as well so i'm uh, i'm doing releases releases for the main label as well as my own label body warmer and uh like i just said just got a new record out with uh, Haley and called kings it's been in the works for nine years can you believe it nine years it was actually supposed to be released officially about two years ago well then that's actually where everything kind of started happening that we're a little bit still in the rest uh of uh, of the pandemic are and um uh i still have two brand new releases coming for this year so at the end of November, uh, we have a brand new release uh, with uh, a Belgian legend. His name is Jan Vervloet. Um, his background goes to my early, early, early party days, like 1994, 95, 96, where he was also uh, making music at that time already uh, as Thunderball. And that is just yeah a starting point in my life and that i'm able to work with such a legend like that's amazing he made a, a fantastic track back in the days called drop it and we kind of reformed that to something which is acceptable to nowadays standards and i've been pushing that uh it's it's party it's party it's really like you know full-on party uh a big room edm style um and uh, totally made for the dance floor to just basically lose your to drop everything and just go. And I uh, got a new collaboration going with uh, two uh, of probably the most talented Mexican producers at the moment. Uh, those guys are Arturo and Gabriel under the name of A and G. Uh, they're doing a lot. They're making a lot of noise right now on uh, Arm Band, Arm uh, Revealed, on uh, basically every label. And um, they're super young super talented guys uh, i already did a release with them uh, called firefly on revealed and uh, we're gonna do a new one uh, at the end of the year and it's gonna be called sink or swim and with that track i actually kind of look back at where i come from so it's a little bit more trancy related we have sarah the warren on vocals and uh, maybe I will try it out tonight. Kind of, I will just try see what the setting is like, how people react to the music that I will be playing. But I might play it as well. I played it yesterday. People went absolutely ape shit to it, and they really like it. I'm really happy that I'm, uh, you know, in full control and able to do creatively everything that I want to do. If it's a commercial thing, if it's an EDM or a big room thing, if it's a vocal trance thing, it doesn't matter. If I feel like it, I can do it. And um, that's just a matter of how you walk into a studio or how you want to start working on a, on a new project is that, you know, it's possible to do it. And, and, and that's what I really like of, uh, of the situation that I'm in right now. Um, next year, uh, 2022, end of March, brand new album. The name, I'm not gonna reveal it yet. I do have it. Uh, I'm in the end of the process of finishing up the whole album. So 
while touring, I've been sneaky road testing here and there some tracks and refining it over time. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I've been working on that for one and a half year, more or less. Um, it's going to be varied, obviously electronically based um, all over the place. Uh, uh, probably a lot of the stuff what people would expect, but also some music that probably people will not expect. So that's going to be the end of uh, March 2020. And um, that's that's the, the calendar as it is uh, and as, as it looks right now, musically. When I started DJing, it was actually about mixing and matching. Mixing and matching the right tunes and it didn't matter if you were a producer, yes or no. We're talking vinyl days here. So we're talking like mid 90s, end of 90s. Then around the 2000s, the start of the 2000s, you should also be able to be a producer. It didn't really matter if you were a good or a bad producer. As long as you can say that you have the records under your belt, you get a little bit of extra shine. They take you also a little bit more seriously as a DJ. DJing was still very, very important. That guy kind of got the overhand until where we are now, where software is so accessible. There's such a low threshold to become a producer. And actually people nowadays, they have to become a producer to become a DJ. Um, really funny short story. Yesterday uh, I was touring here in Canada. We go into the venue, we get stopped by the security like, okay, I don't know this guy. Okay, problem, no problem, we just wait. And we start chatting really quick and he says, yeah, yeah, I'm a DJ too. And I'm thinking like, okay, cool. Who is not a DJ nowadays? Uh, so we wait until we get, you know, like verified and stuff. And my tour manager, he shows him some of the, the, the things that I've done over the years. And the guy says, oh, oh, you're a verified DJ. Ah, okay. What does that mean? I have no idea. But maybe that's where we're going to, that you can be a DJ. You can be a verified DJ. You can be an artist. You can be a producer. Nowadays, because I want to go back to the original part of your question, what is most important is that you find a, a, a comfort for yourself where you want to be. If you want to be a producer, fine, be a producer. Be the best producer you can be. Be original. Do something that other people are not doing. Go deep, go far. Really know your equipment. Know what you want to do and try to get that out of your 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 laptop even you don't even have to have a whole studio it's not about the kitchen it's about the cook um that is really important um be able to learn i'm still learning every day of the week you know and that's why i'm not doing master classes or courses because i don't see myself as a master i'm still learning i don't know everything a to z i'm not classically trained i'm not musically schooled I learned myself everything from where I am now and I'm still learning. So always be eager to learn and to absorb as much as you can to make yourself better. Um, and be comfortable at, at where you want to be. If you want to be an artist, then you have to basically go through a lot of stuff, a big package to become that artist nowadays. And that's difficult uh, because there's not enough time even to explain how much time it takes and how much effort it takes to become an artist, to become a DJ nowadays. So with that, you have this imp impeccable, incredible uh, competitive market of people making music all over the globe. That's something you have to keep in the back of your mind. And um, I, I just want to say, you know, that with that, I'm super happy that there are so many people right now in making new music in trying to find new ways and or going back to hardware where everybody went for software just to get an edge and to be special to create that special sound that makes you you and just be comfortable with that that's the most important thing one of 
my Jeffrey Sartoria's career highlights without any doubt is closing down Ultra Europe after Swedish House Mafia. That being said, what I played there was a Jeffrey Sartoria show. And the feedback that I got from that show is something I will not forget quickly. Um, the thing is, is that being fully in control of a crowd in order to what I want to play compared to all the music that I'm uh, checking on a weekly basis is that my old alias was considered a trans artist, uh, trans, trans artist, uh, being a trans artist. And with Jeffrey Sartorius, that is not per se the case. Um, if the, the crowd is feeling for a trans vibe, definitely I will curate to that. If it's not, I will not. And that's the freedom that I have and that I'm actually, um, well, kind of exploiting right now with the shows. So, um, also even on tonight's show, I played some music that people will not expect on an older show of Jeffrey Sartorius on the, the different alias. As Jeffrey Sartorius, I can, and I'm confident in what I do. And when I see when I make those choices and they're the right choices, it gives an extra to a show. So not that I'm going from A to Z electronically, that rhymes by the way, but I want to tap more into different genres than or trance only or EDM only or big room only. And there's so much to choose from because like I said before in the interview, there is so much talent out there some are already recognized, some are not, making amazing music. And I want to be able to support that too, even if it would not be fitting in a set that people would normally expect from me. You know what I mean? So that's, that's the difference. The other difference is that when I started producing as Jeffrey Sartorius, one of the first things that I did is making a remix for Mayan, Mayan featuring Iken and tracks called Cold Summer. And when I finished that, people could not grasp what for, to put it in what kind of style, in what kind of genre. So people labeled that as electro prog pop, which is not a genre at all. And I was like, okay, well, if you guys see it like that, that's really cool because then supposedly I made something unique that you cannot like really fit into a box. And that was kind of the, the creative start for me as Jeffrey Sartorius on a road to eventually what has to become the album next year. Um, but obviously also tapping into, you know, vocal stuff a lot. A lot. I love vocal stuff. Um, but also instrumentals and uh, also heart rating stuff or more progressive type of stuff. That's what I really like from the creative side, being a producer, Jeffrey Sartorius, but this is also a little bit what you can expect with Jeffrey Sartorius shows. They're not specially curated for one type of audience. I think, I think that's the near future right now. Um, what you see, it's, and it's becoming a little bit of a trend, is that uh, people are taking on different aliases to uh, kind of tap into different markets and different genres. With Jeffrey Sartorius, I don't see the need to. I feel confident in what I do. And when people come to a Jeffrey Sartorius show, they will get a quality show no matter what type of music it will be. Well, the, the, the funny part is that um, a long time ago, I'm, I'm saying like maybe 12 years ago, uh, actually uh, I was doing a, late, a lot of A&R work for Europa Records, which was under the wings of Armada music. And a lot of the artists that were featured back in the day, they were on Europa Records because of the a &R work that I did for the label. Uh, obviously uh, in cooperation with my partners, but um, definitely I had a, a lead in, in signing new talent to the label. In some cases that led to collaborations as well. And coming back from where 
I started as a DJ buying vinyl in a record shop. It's completely a long time ago, completely different perspective of how music was, um, uh, how it sounded, but also, you know, how popular it was or how not popular it was, doesn't matter. Is that when I went to a record shop, I knew and I still know by listening to a single song for 10 to 15 seconds if I like it or not. And what am I looking for? That's a question I have to ask myself. I don't know. That is that is completely a feeling. It's not something I can put in words. I have to hear something that clicks with me, that can be a groove, that can be uh, some kind of a synthesizer sound, it can be a vocal, um, it can be a, just a simple beat. I know what I want in 10 to 15 seconds. And I've, I've done that for all my life. So you have to imagine yourself that I go to the record shop, I'm you know, gonna buy some new records, and I just do, I take a needle, I put it on the record, dip, 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 and I know. And that's how I build up my record collection. I still have it. And this is how I listen to music. It needs to grasp me within 10 to 15 seconds. If not, and that has served well, my purpose for my career. And uh, yeah, like I say, uh, and, and what I kind of explained in your question towards other producers is like, yeah, you have to come up with something which is maybe unusual, which is surprising. And that doesn't have to be very complicated. It can also be very simple. A esteemed colleague of mine once said, "Music is what feelings like, uh, feelings feel like, and that is that is true. And you cannot put that in a box and say that will work for everybody, because it's personal, and that's personal for everybody. And from that personal side, it will go to close friends, and sometimes it it goes wider, and sometimes that." goes really quick and sometimes goes really, really slow and takes time to develop. And of course you can hear difference in certain types of quality nowadays because a lot of people are shifting back to, um, uh, you know, software, from software to outboard stuff in order to, you know, go the extra mile and to create that you know, edge that difference. Um, but I think we're we're really going to a very interesting time in the electronic music scene right now. Uh, for the next couple of five to ten years, to see where everything is leading. Because, I mean, can you ever imagine that techno becomes melodic? I could have never guessed because techno is one of the most abstract type of music in our in our industry as a genre. And now it's melodic and now it has vocals too. So it seems that everything that was kind of boxed in or you know had a certain label to it like how it should sound or how it should be that's off. But that 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 only that not only goes for techno that goes for everything. So that only goes that not only goes for techno, that also goes for trance, that also go, goes for EDM, for Big Room. All the bets are off. So the question is, what are the producers of now and the future are going to make of that? And I think when you look into what happens with uh, uh, producing music, is a lot of people put their own feelings into it, but also circumstances. So that's why a lot of people will probably approach their music differently because there was a pandemic you know they they're focused more or you know they have a different approach on how to make their music and that makes it different of what it was and that is one of the key features features of electronic music that it's been always evolving 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 and i'm really curious where it will go in the next five to ten years I mean, in the next five years, what is going to happen is, you know, is uh, let's say 50% of, of, of producers, are they going to go on an algorithm that is going to decide 
where their production will lead or will they keep on doing their own stuff that already creates a split right now in what the future is going to uphold and where differences are going to be and those differences are they going to be accepted yes or no i think it's super super interesting time right now I've always said that when it comes to performing, then you have to be really staying close to yourself, your core values of who you are. Don't portray to be something or someone who you are not. And that goes wrong for a lot of people. And it's actually what I saw a lot during many, many live streams in, in the COVID uh, period when a lot of people were, you know, picking up a camera and started streaming. And I've said that a couple of times in interviews as well. Then you see forced acting. It's a different setting. So then you're an upcoming performer or you're a well-known performer. And then you're not in front of a crowd, you're in front of a camera. And then you have to be all happy. Well, maybe you're not happy because you actually want to be in front of the crowd. But at the same time, Maybe your phone is going down with all people on, on, on your social saying like, oh yeah, I really like this song or I, I don't like that song. And it's still, it's still, you're just in a room there with your music. For me, as a performer, the music does the trick. It should be enough. The core of what, of, of what things are, music. Music, sound, light. That should be in perfect sync with each other, then you can have a great performance. If you are into the music, if you are just playing the music, and that's what you see a lot. Why? Because people have to make music to get known, if you get known. If you want to become professional, you need to become a DJ, and you have to. But do you really want to? And that is the question that a lot of people should ask themselves. Do I really want to? And let's be really honest. The other side, where do I come from? I'm a DJ at heart. My core is being a DJ. My core is not being a producer. People know that. I don't have to hide that. I'm really open and honest about that. And that's why I don't consider myself a core producer. I know uh, I can help. I can assist. Uh, I can engineer. Can I do everything from A to Z? No, I can't. Does that matter? No, because I'm confident in what I do, with what I can produce, what I represent as a person, as an artist. Going back to the original part of your question. If you're on stage, you have to be happy with what you're doing and who you are. And that's not easy because you get into different phases of emotion. What if you have to go on stage and you just heard that someone you dearly love passed away? Uh, what, uh, what if you didn't have a lot of sleep and you actually feel like shit and people are all excited to see you on stage? And it's gonna be forced acting. Or can you use a switch that makes you get into a different vibe to actually portray to the people what they're expecting from you from a show. And if you're a new upcoming artist, what are the people expecting from you? It's so difficult because you need to make miles before people have an expectancy of you. If uh, new producers go to do their first shows, do you know what the people are expecting? Maybe their first records and then what? What, what, is, what is the upside? What is the, the extra? What is um, the extra value to being a new fresh artist right now? It's really, really difficult. Do you need to play live instruments on stage? Do you need that creativity? Is that being requested from the industry right now? I don't know. I think people are asking a lot of, you know, people are asking around a lot. What is the new thing? What is the next thing? Does it, does there need to be a next thing? You know, when it ain't broken, don't try to fix it. But sometimes, especially where 
the creative producing world meets an artist world, that's where, where you get a little bit of a friction there because you have, um, you have different things that are important from the creative side that it continues to move on and it stays creative and you have to keep up from being an artist you do not per se need to do that you need to have a good show that you want to portray where with what you are portraying you are happy with that but also connects to your fans and i had an interview when i was in china and they actually asked me what do you think is the most important thing the next most important step in the industry and i think actually that is the development of artists by agencies you know are you going for a face are you going for a personality are you going for a producer how do you you know those those choices right now they are going to be um uh yeah most important for the agencies for the future of uh, uh, the programming of the shows for the future of the artist world for the future of producers so that's where i see a very important role for agencies in developing new talent or helping to develop new talent because i've always seen um, the music industry very compatible with um, soccer because there needs to be artist development, talent development in a good way in order to eventually bring the industry steps forward. That's what happens in, 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 in the soccer industry world. And I think there's a lot of overlaps there where at this point, I think it's up to the agency uh, agencies of this world to make the right choices for the right artists with the right perspective for the right future. The, the thing is, is that what, what a lot of people ask themselves is like, what do I have to give up to get to the next world? And it kind of depends on the person and the possibilities of the person. What are the options you have? And I get a lot of questions from also young upcoming artists like, hey, what should we do? What should we go for? And uh, you know, if, if somebody's interested, should we go for that or shouldn't we go for that? And what I try to do with my experience is to advise per person to make the right choice with my experience. So you have to t take me out of the equation. I'm a manager or an agency for that matter. And I need to give the perfect advice to an up and coming artist. That, that has to be, yeah, that is, that is so important. Why? Uh, because you can scar people if you are just saying, yeah, yeah, go for everything and go for it. And it's all based on you connecting to an artist where you also are earning money from that it, it's becoming more professional and it's becoming more about income and that kind of stuff. Maybe that's not interesting for that artist at that point at all. A lot of phases of the development of talent are, I think they are really underestimated. And the more you take into the equation to help to build an artist in every facet, not just saying, oh yeah, we're gonna sign you. Oh, oh look, you're, up, you're on our website. It doesn't work like that. It's what we call in Dutch maatwerk. You really need to know who you're talking to, uh, the background, the character, certain type of intelligence. Um, you need to know what are the goals? Do they match with what an HG wants to, you know, uh, uh, want, wants to achieve? Does that go with the artist as well or the upcoming artist? Long story short, there's a lot of work in this and being really, really careful and, and specific about it makes people better. And yeah, I, I see that as a great importance in the role of the agencies right now. 
I'm just, I'm, I, I told you in the other room, I'm a lucky beep because uh, people know what I represent. They know what I stand for. Uh, I'm just Jeff, you know, and I won't change. I, I, I'm the same guy. Uh, sometimes I play the same music, sometimes I don't. Um, but I also realize, and that's what I really felt on stage today as well, very, very much, is that I am not able to do this without the support of the fans. And, you know, it's not a one trick pony thing where you say, oh yeah, you, you say that. Yeah, I do say that. I do say that a lot, but I also really mean it because that is just what it is. No fans, no glory. And um, it's still growing, you know? It's still people who are actually, to the day of today, figuring out, hey, Jeffrey Sartorius, or I know that guy, and they have to get used to the new name a little bit. It's all in the game, it's fine. But there is the support, and people continuously support and I can only be really really grateful for that that they see that I'm really trying and uh, I'm, I'm human at the day you know at the end of the day too you know so I have my doubts I have my insecurities uh, I have my good moods I have my bad moods I'm, I'm the same I'm the same sometimes people put you on the pedestal and they think oh my god it's not true people in the end are all the same you know so i don't see myself of any more importance than a fan i will never step over fans never never because they give me the possibility to do what i like so much and it's 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 like a it's an army of love it's it's you know it's it's ever growing because people they get to know me also because of them and you know like i said before sometimes that grows really quick with like new releases coming out or an album or a certain tour somewhere. And sometimes that grows more steadily. That's just how it goes.